Good evening and welcome to our Wednesday evening service uh, here at Dominion Center. I welcome all of you Dominion Center members and uh, everyone who has tuned in tonight uh, to worship with us. Thank you for joining us tonight. I know from all over the world, uh, people are tuning in. Uh, God bless you for doing that. And it is my prayer that the Lord blesses you tonight for uh, honoring an invitation to be with the Lord. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this evening. Uh, thank you for uh, bringing, bringing us to come and study your word. Uh, we commit ourselves into your hands. I pray the Lord for everyone who has tuned in tonight to listen to your word, the Lord, you bless them. I pray especially for those who are down, the Lord, through your word, through the ministration of your word tonight, you lift them up and uh, you bring them to a point where they can begin to praise you and draw closer to you. I thank you. I bless you. I know you have heard us and you have answered us. Therefore, I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, tonight I have titled my message, We Have Cause to, to Thank the Lord. We Have Cause to Thank the Lord. Now, I believe Thanksgiving is a very, very important aspect of our Christian life. In fact, it is the will of God that we thank God. But first, Thessalonians 5.18 tells us that in everything we should give thanks. And that verse goes on to say that, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for us. So if you're not sure about it, tonight I want to remind you, I want to uh, just encourage you that it is the will of God that we thank God all the time in every situation and in every circumstance. But tonight, I have a few reasons that I want to use to encourage you why it is necessary as believers uh, to thank the Lord at all times. And uh, I have been reflecting on this. Uh, when I think about it, as I stand here, I have life and I have strength. Uh, for some people, that doesn't mean much, but for me, it means so much, especially in a year like 2020, when thousands, in fact, hundreds of thousands of people have lost their lives. So the fact that I, I have life and the fact that I have strength, the fact that I can stand here tonight and worship, for me, it is so precious, and I thank God for that. And I believe it is the same for you. Sometimes we take that for granted. But if you ever visit a hospital, for example, and you see people who are there, who are on the brink of death, or who are almost dying, or you've ever seen someone who is gasping for breath, you begin to thank God for the breath that is in you. So the first thing that I'm saying is, because you have life and you have strength, you have cause to thank the Lord. Now, I remember one of the parables that the Lord Jesus Christ uh, told in Luke chapter 12 about a farmer who had a big harvest. And after he had a big harvest, he just said to his soul that his soul should just relax because he's got so much. Now, I'll read a few verses of that scripture for us. This is to help us to appreciate the life and the breath that we have. Now, Luke's Gospel, chapter 12, and I'll read from verse 16. Then he spoke a parable to them, saying, this is the Lord Jesus speaking here, the ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully, and he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, since I have no room to store my crops? So he said, 
I will do this. I'll pull down my bands and build greater. And there I will store all my crops and all my goods. And I will say to my soul, So, you have many goods laid up for you many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Verse 20, but God said to him, Fool, this night your soul will be required of thee. Then whose will those things be which you have provided? So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. So at any time, this breath, this life that we have, God can decide to take it away from us. So when I get up in the morning and I realize that I have life and I have strength, the first thing I do say is, thank you, Lord, for life. Thank you, Lord, for strength. And I hope you will join me in doing that every day of your life. Praise the Lord. Now, secondly, I want to say that we are in the middle of December. Uh, in two weeks' time, this year, 2020, would have come to an end. And what an extraordinary year it has been. Thousands, literally hundreds of thousands of people have died. And therefore, if I have life at the end of this year, COVID-19 has come and passed by me, and I still have life and strength. I believe, and I hope you do so, that we need to thank God. And we need to thank Him all the time. You see, it is by His grace and by His mercy that we are still here. And I want to take a few verses. I want to read a few verses from Psalm 124 to buttress this point that indeed we ought to thank God. Psalm 124, and I'm reading the whole psalm. It is made up of eight verses. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us, when coronavirus rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us alive. Coronavirus would have sw swallowed us alive when its wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters would have overwhelmed us. The stream would have gone over our soul. Then the swollen waters would have gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us as prey to their teeth. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us as prey to the teeth of coronavirus. Our soul has escaped as a bird from the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken. We have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. And I believe you join me in praising God. Join me in thanking God. That if God has spared us, God has delivered us from this deadly virus, you and I ought to praise him. Therefore, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm very much aware that some of us may have lost family, perhaps. Some of us may have lost jobs. Some of us may have lost, lost businesses. But in spite of all that, if you still have life and strength, then thank God. Because if you have life, what else will the Lord not add to you? So thank him for that. Don't dwell on the negatives, but dwell on the positives. And the positive is that you have life. Remember the Lord said, in everything we ought to give him thanks. So yes, you may have lost a job. You may have lost family member, but you are still here on earth, which means that the Lord has a lot more to do with you. And therefore, rise up from where you are and praise him. I also want you to remember, his word tells us in Romans 8 and verse 28, that for those of us who are called 
according to his purpose. For those of us who love the Lord, he said he will cause all things to work together for our good. So if even you have lost someone, I want to remind you that the Lord is able to use this situation. The Lord is able to use this circumstance to your advantage. And therefore, don't stay down there and don't dwell on it. Rise up and let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, as a church, we have just finished our two weeks of fasting and prayer. Now, during this time, I believe many of us have put requests before the Lord. There are so many things that we have asked God. Now, now that we have finished this prayer and fasting, this is the time to begin to praise God in anticipation, in faith, in expectancy, with an outstretched neck, expecting that those things that you have put before the Lord, the Lord is going to answer you. And that calls for thanksgiving. That calls for praise. That calls for you whenever those thoughts come to your mind that I've put such and such and such before the Lord. For you to praise him in faith that as you praise him, the Lord will bring those things to pass. Hallelujah. And on that note, again, I'll read bits of Psalm 116. Psalm 116. Just want to read a few verses from there. I'll read verses 1 and 2, and then I'll jump down and read verses 17 to 19. I love the Lord because he has heard me. My voice and my supplication. The Lord has heard my voice and my supplication my supplications, because he has inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call upon him as long as I live. So if you believe that you brought your prayer request before the Lord these two weeks, and the Lord has answered you, although you may not have seen it in the flesh, but you have that faith in your heart, then begin to thank him. Begin to praise him. Verse 17 of Psalm 116 says, I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. So in the house of the Lord, praise him today. Lift up your voice and say, Lord, I thank you. Now, Philippians 4, 6 also tells us that we shouldn't worry. We shouldn't be anxious. Perhaps you, you find yourself in a situation which calls for worry, which calls for anxiety. God's word again tells us that we should not be anxious about anything, but in all things, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, we should let our request be known unto God. So after we have brought our prayers, our supplications before the Lord, we are encouraged to thank him as well. And the promise follows that the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall fill your hearts and your minds. I pray that as you praise the Lord, the peace of God will indeed be your portion. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, perhaps this year you've been born again, or you have received an answer already to your prayers. That also is an opportunity to thank the Lord. So all these things are opportunities to thank the Lord. James reminds us in James 1 and verse 17 that every good and every perfect gift comes from the Father of lights, comes from God. It doesn't come from anywhere. It comes from God. So if you have received anything from the Lord this year that is coming to an end, then you ought to praise him. And I believe on that count, each and every one of us, none of us is exempted from that. 
we ought to be filled with praise. In fact, may I challenge you, may I uh, actually test you on this, that we've got just two weeks to go till the end of 2020. May you rise up from your bed every day and give praise to the Lord because the Lord has been good to you and he's added one more year to your life. Hallelujah. Now read a few verses from Psalm 103 to remind us of some of the things that the Lord does for us. And sometimes we even forget to thank him. I agree with the songwriter who says, count your blessings and name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done for you. Now, there are a few here in Psalm 103. I'm reading the first five verses. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And he names them, verse 3, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. I believe many of us will find maybe one, two, three, or more things mentioned in Psalm 103, verses 1 to 5, that the Lord has done for us. And therefore, we have to praise him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, Thanksgiving has got, apart from these things that I've enumerated, which are many, and I believe many of us fall into that category. There are other things that Thanksgiving done. There are things that, there are times that we don't have to wait uh, and see benefits. But as we praise God, the Lord does things for us. And I want to cite a few examples. Now, the first one I want to take from Psalm 50 and verse 23. Psalm 50 and verse 23 says that if we praise God, we honor him. So that's the first thing. So whenever we, we thank him or whenever we praise the Lord, we are what? Honoring him. I'll read it quickly. Whoever offers praise glorifies me. And to him who orders his conduct aright, I will show the salvation of the Lord. So whenever we come before the Lord and whenever we praise the Lord, we thank the Lord for specific things, we honor him. And not only that, once we do that, when we are in challenging situations, the Lord comes through. The Lord comes through and the Lord delivers us. I remember again Acts 16 Verse 25 to 34, I wouldn't have time to read those verses of Scripture because of time. When Paul and Silas began to sing hymns in the prison, there was an earthquake. They were released from prison. Someone and his household, the jailer and his household got saved. I remember in Luke 17, when one of the blind men came back to thank the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord said, go and be whole. Initially, he had healing. But when he came back and thanked the Lord, he had an additional benefit. That tells me that whenever we praise the Lord, whenever we thank him for things that he has done for us, he gives us more or he blesses us more. Thanksgiving also uh, builds our faith. If we thank God it strengthens and it builds our faith. So when you are down, when you are weighed down, when things are upon you and it seems to be a big load, begin to thank the Lord. And as you thank the Lord, the Lord comes into your situation and the Lord lifts every burden. Praise the Lord. Now the last one I want to say is that praise is a weapon. Praise is a weapon. 
and I just want to take a few verses of Scripture from Psalm 149, and then I'll bring my message to an end. So Psalm 149. I'm reading from verses 6 to 9. Quickly, Psalm 149, verse 6. It says, Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the people, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute on them the written judgment. This honor have all his sins. So praise the Lord, lift up his name, worship him, and as you do that, the Lord will deliver you from any oppressive situation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I hope you have been encouraged by this short message about Thanksgiving and the rest of the year you are going to spend thanking God. Now, Perhaps you've heard uh, this message about Thanksgiving tonight and perhaps you want to have a personal relationship with the Lord so that you'll be able to thank him for whatever comes your way. If that is the situation of that is the case with you, I want you to pray this simple prayer with me. Please repeat after me. Lord Jesus Christ, I have heard your voice tonight. I want you to be my savior because I believe you died for my sins and you rose again. Lord, come into my life. Be my savior and be my Lord and give me the power and the authority to live as a born again Christian. Thank you for hearing my prayer. If you prayed that prayer in faith, believing in your heart, then I want, to, I want to assure you that the Lord has come in and your life will never be the same. Find a good Bible-believing church and go and worship with them. If you are in London, come and visit us here at Wood Green uh, where we worship uh, at Dominion Center. God bless you. Now, it's offering time. Uh, at the end of our service, we want to give offering, uh, our offerings and perhaps maybe your tithe also to the Lord, if that is the case. Uh, the information will be on the screen uh, as I speak. I want you to bring in your, your tithe or your offering to the Lord, and the Lord will bless you. You can give directly into the account that is given uh, on there, on, on the screen. On the other hand, if you want to sign a check, you can post it to us at Dominion Center. And I believe the Lord will bless you. Okay, let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for your word tonight. And thank you also for uh, our brothers and our sisters who have given to you. I pray, O oh Lord, that the, 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 the blessings of giving shall be theirs in Jesus' name. If there are those who couldn't give, I pray that Lord bless them that next time when they come before you, they will be able to give. Thank you for answered prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And I hope you tune in again to Dominion Center, uh, uh, our live stream, or uh, our Wednesday service in future. God bless you.
Just 